So I want to talk, this is going to be a weird message for some of you, but it's going to be what it's going to be. I want to talk from a little, I'm still talking about this whole Rehoboth piece from last week, but I want to kind of, this is going to be weird, and I know it's going to be weird, and it's okay, because I've been preaching for a little bit to understand that sometimes some sermons are weird, and they don't fit everybody, but they do fit somebody. And um, I think it's going to help give you clarity to what you know, but you don't know. And, and so if I hopefully can articulate it well enough, you will be able to comprehend. Y'all, let's turn to Genesis chapter number 26 again. Uh, we were there last week. Um, Genesis chapter number 26. Genesis chapter number 26. And um, it says... Genesis 26. I want you to write the note, Genesis 14. Genesis 14 is a passage of scripture whereby um, Isaac is, you know, Isaac is the son of who? Abraham. Isaac is the son of Abraham. And Isaac is the son of Abraham. And Abraham is walking his son up the mountain. And he's walking his son up the mountain, Isaac, his son. His son is supposed to be about 30 years old, according to the text that we, uh, most scholars believe. And when he's walking up the mountain, God is watching Abraham as, y'all remember this in Sunday school? And, and he's about to kill his only son, his son of his promise, and he's about to strike him. And when he's about to strike him, God says, don't do it. Now I know I can trust you. I can trust you. And so now Isaac is no longer is no longer dead because God had a ram coming up on the side of the bush and he says you're good I, I know you now you don't you don't have to do this and so so Isaac has history with God he knows he knows personally that if God wanted to kill me he could have killed me then pause so because he knows that if God wanted to kill him he could have killed him then he now has the ability to trust God because he knows that God's best for me is ahead of me. Because if he did not have nothing for me, he would have let me die in the last season. Okay, you still missed it. So Genesis chapter number 26, it says, Now there was a famine in the land besides the previous famine in Abraham's time. And Isaac went to Abimelech, the king, of the Philistines in Gerar, the Lord appeared to Isaac and said, do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land where I tell you to live. Stay in this land for a while and I will be with you and I will bless you. For to you and your descendants, I will give this land and confirm an oath that I swore to your father, Abraham. Okay, verse number, verse number, verse number, verse number, verse number nine. So, um, Verse number 10. Then Abimelech said, well, verse number 12. I'm sorry. Verse number 12. Getting excited reading this. Verse number 12 says, Isaac planted crops in the land, in the land of famine. In that same year reaped a hundredfold because the Lord blessed him. The man became rich. His wealth continued to grow until he became very wealthy. I'm not going to talk about that because that gets people excited and then they don't do no work. Okay, so because there is a process to every promise, okay, there's a process to every promise. So we're not going to sit here and declare promises without the process. He had so many flocks and herds and servants that the Philistines envied him. The Philistines, they begin to envy him. So after all the wells that his father's servants had dug up in the time of, of his father Abraham, the Philistines stopped them up, filling them up with earth, with mud. They started blocking the wells with mud and earth. Then Abimelech said to Isaac, move away far from us. You have become too powerful. So now the king that was his ally said, you know what? We're starting to see that you're prospering a little too much. There's a potential that you may try to take over the entire territory. So we want you to go. He, 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 he could have been mad because this is my territory, Josh. This is my area. And I, I, I'm, I worked for this. And so he says, okay, cool. I'm, I'm willing to go. I'm willing to go. And Isaac's servants dug in the valley. And verse 19, and discovered water. 
and, and, and fresh water there. But the herders of Gerar quarreled with those of Isaac and said, the water is ours. So he named the well Esek, Esek, because they disputed with him. Then he dug another well and they quarreled with him and he named it Sitna. He moved on from there, dug another well, and no one quarreled with him. And he named the well, what? Rehoboth. And Rehoboth means open spaces. It also means the Lord has made room for us. And so he begins to build God an altar because after all, God has done for him. I want to talk from a little interesting message title, which is so crazy, but it may make sense later. I want to talk about an awkward anointing. I want to tell some of you the reason why life has been uniquely distinct for you is because you are awkward and you have what I call an awkward anointing. It's not normal. It does not fit everywhere. And you sometimes try to make yourself fit. And even though you try, it doesn't work. It's what I have labeled an awkward anointing. Even if you look over your life, it's just been awkward. How you got to where you got has been awkward. It's what I call an awkward. I believe that God sends people to a church that speaks to who they are. And most of you, not all of you, but most of you can attest that I'm awkward. I know it. I don't fit in. I don't, every time I try, I may wear the same clothes as them. I may even be a real Patriots fan like some of them, but I am awkward. I, I'm uniquely different. And I've got history with God. God. This history that I got with God lets me know that I'm awkward. God put me up on a mountain, was trying to take my life, spared my life, and because he spared my life, I understand that his plans for me must be something because if he did not have something for me, he had the right opportunity to kill me when he did, and therefore I know, and I want to help. This is prophetic in some instance. Some of you are trying to do things in places that everyone is doing them and it doesn't seem like God is blessing them because you know God told you to do it in an awkward place and you don't know why he asked you to do it. It's because you're awkward. Now this is the last time you're going to touch your neighbor till Wednesday night and I want you to touch them and say I'm awkward. I'm awkward. I'm awkward. Touch, touch two of them. Just, just touch two of them and say I'm, I'm, I'm awkward. I'm, I'm um, I am awkward. I am, I am awkward. I'm awkward. So God tells him this. Don't, don't follow a previous pattern. Don't go down to Egypt. Because sometimes patterns keep us in a holding pattern. Because this is the pattern I know, this is what I do. And because this is what I do, it's because of what I know. Sometimes what's killing us from going forward is what you know. It is what you know that's drowning you from hearing God's voice. And this is why we're fasting on Wednesday. So that you can circumcise, we can circumcise our ear to hear God give us the awkward commands that do not make sense to everybody but they make sense to us here's what I want you to know if it doesn't make sense to anybody as long as you know it makes sense to you that's all that matters God is using your awkwardness it is not your similarity he's using he's using your awkwardness and being awkward sometimes can feel strange and you're telling everybody God told me to stay in Gerar I know everybody leaving, they're going to Egypt, but God told me to stay in Gerar, and this is what the Lord had told me to do, and here's the thing, we cannot pursue the God we want and not the God who is. We cannot pursue the God that we want. God, I want you to bring me out this way. I want you to take me to this school. Well, maybe your heart's been set on going to UCF, and God sends you to Washington State. You cannot determine 
how God is going to use you. And a lot of us are giving God rules on how we want it done. At 40, I want to have this. At 30, I want to have three children. At 25, I want to be. And God is not obligated to meet our requirements. We cannot want a God that we want and not a God who is. God may be the one that puts you in a pause season. God may be the one that puts you in a holding season. It may not be Satan. It may be God himself. And here it is. This man is, is, is doing what God has told him to do. And, and he begins to build. He begins to build. And he begins to build. And, and all of a sudden, he, he's, God's telling him, this is what I want you to do. In essence, God is saying to him, I want you to stay in Gerar where the Philistines are. So in essence, I want you to stay where your enemies are. I want you to, I want you to plant your business where all your competition, where all your adversaries are. I want you not to put it down the street where nobody is. I want you to put it where it's already saturated. And God, that doesn't make any sense, Lord. Look, no, no, I want you to go where everybody says, if you go there, you're not going to make it. This is where I want you to go. And if you tell everybody what God told you, they're going to talk you out of it. That's why I call it an awkward anointing. You've got to be willing to do what you heard, even if everybody that knows you thinks you're crazy Noah I want you to build me a boat I've never seen rain before never heard of rain before but I'm going to do it because God told me to do it you are awkward Abraham I want you to leave your family I want you to leave your comfort zone I want you to leave everything that you built and go to a land that you've never heard of never seen and tell all your family even though y'all were prospering even though we're rich even though we got cattle God told me to leave everything boy have you lost your mind you don't went to college for four years and you're telling me you're going to drop this good high paying job to go pursue something that's in your head yes I am going to do it you are absolutely awkward no they will say you're crazy and you'll look back at them and say no I am awkward I am awkward and, and God tells him this is what I want you to do he says I want you to migrate I want you to migrate and, and all of a sudden when he starts when he starts doing what God told him to do in a strange land, he starts doing it in a strange land, and then he starts, he starts prospering. He starts prospering. He starts prospering. And then all of a sudden, the Philistines that were with him, they were okay with him. But then when he started prospering, the Philistines started getting enraged. And here's the thing that you and I need to understand. We won't be distracted by comparison if we're captivated by purpose. We will not be distracted by comparison if we're captivated by purpose. When you hear what God has called you to dig, you will not be distracted by what other people are doing because you are so busy because purpose has caught your attention and your affection. I want to ask you a question. What have you been called to do? What has God asks you to do. The only reason why you're not dead, I am not dead, is because God called whether you're a fighter fire, whether you're a paramedic, God has called you whether you're in the nursing field, whether you're in the water division, whether you're in the garbage division, whether you're in the real estate division, God has called you and he's using you. Don't think the only people that God is using are people on a platform or people on a pulpit. He's using you. He's using your story. He's using your life that you can tell other people. The only way I made this is because God did it that is the same thing that says I can do all things through Christ which gives me the strength it's just a different way of saying it so I don't want you to minimize that you are a minister of Jesus Christ wherever you go when people go to you and you could rob them and charge them a hundred percent more and you're honest and say listen this is what it costs to fix it I could have charged you more but I'm gonna trust that if I do it God's way. God will give me more clients than being shady and saying I'm a Christian just to get more business. And God will honor that. And here it is when you're, what have you been called to do? What, what have you been called to do? That's what God made you here for. 
Maybe it's not just a career. Maybe God has called you to raise somebody's child. They're not yours, but God has called you to raise them. Maybe God has called you to raise your children and to instill something. You got to look at your life as more than just what you're collecting as a check. I'm never going to talk to you about that because that's irrelevant because you can have money and still be miserable. You can have money and still be unhappy and you could have a little bit of money and have a lot of contentment. You could have a little bit of money and have a great family. You can have a little bit of money and have a peaceful house because it's not all about how many zeros are at the end of your account. It's about being in the purpose of God for your life. And when you're in the purpose of God for your life, he will cause ravens to feed you. He will make sure that your life is taken care of. It is not about the things. The things may come as a byproduct of you fulfilling your purpose. But at the end of the day, you want to lie down and go to bed. And on your final day, your children look at you and say you're blessed. Your spouse look at you and say you're blessed. This is what I'm trying to get you to see. That God is trying to put you in an awkward space. It's not normal. Don't try to be what everybody else is doing or being because that's not what God called you to do. He called you to stand out and stand ahead of everybody. The way you do it may not be the way everybody does it. The way you have, you may be one that God told you, get off social media and I still will prosper you even if you're not on it. You don't have to do it the world's way to get the king's results. You just got to follow what God said to you and it may be awkward to others but they won't think you're awkward when they see the hand of God on your life. So it's purpose. So here it is. Growth is always threatening to the insecure. So, so you, growth is always threatening to the insecure. So you who are experiencing the Philistine warfare because you're growing, and I'm not just talking about stuff, I'm talking about you can grow in maturity, you can grow in intellect, you can grow an emotional capacity or your emotional quotient. And there will be people that will have hostility towards you because you've grown. And growth highlights their lack of growth and their insecurity. And so you got to know that growth causes warfare. That it's not just regular warfare. I'm not talking about just your friends that hate you. I'm not just talking about people that you know that dislike you. I'm talking about people that Satan feels their heart to stop your wells and the reason why I'm asking some of you to pray is because you've sowed and the reason why you're not reaping a harvest is because Satan has filled the hearts of people to block up your well and that what means is that every time you sow you go looking for a harvest but you don't see it it's like the hose I told you you hear the water but you don't see it coming out you feel it but you don't receive it it's it's not just enemies, family, co-workers. It is Satan who fills the hearts of people. What happened to Judas was Satan filled his heart. And when he filled his heart, he tried to slow down the purpose and the plan of God. And the reason why you're fasting and praying is so that your eyes can be open to be able to see those who are blocking up your well, those who are stopping your progress. It is not natural, some of the things that you're facing. It's supernatural. It has nothing to do with with anything but it has everything to do with a spiritual thing and that's why you got to get more spiritual because some of you are going online yelling at everybody telling everybody off and it ain't got nothing to do with them it may be the necessity for you to close your door turn over your plate and say Lord whatever is blocking my harvest whatever is stopping me from going forward it is not natural it's supernatural it's just like at the end of the year and my throat would never give me an issue Monday through Friday but the minute I picked up a microphone I would start coughing I would start having these issues and I started talking to somebody and he said it's not natural you're trying to do all these natural things but it has nothing to do with the natural it has everything to do with the spirit it is trying to stop the echoing of your voice and there are some things that ain't got nothing to do with you it got everything to do with Satan knowing that you're 
in purpose and he tries to drown out the plan and the purpose of God. You can look at me like you got like you drunk prune juice, but the reason why you're not going forward is because Satan has blocked up your well. He's blocked up your ears from hearing what God is saying. Even though God is speaking, you can't hear him. Why? Because he's blocked up your wells. This is how we pray. Not Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for giving me this. But Lord, help me uncover the secret assassins that have been assigned to stop my destiny. That have been assigned. Your divorce may have not been a natural thing. It may have been a spiritual thing. The attack on your marriage may not be a natural thing. It may be a spiritual thing. You're sitting there talking about commitment. It ain't got nothing to do with commitment. It got to do with something spiritual. But you can't see it because you ain't praying. So you got to open up your eyes to be able to see. You got to be able to open up your spirit to be able to see. And you may seem awkward. You may walk in your house and say, I don't like the spirit that's in here. And everybody look at you like you're crazy. I'm not crazy. I already told you. I'm awkward. And I know what I feel. I know what I sense. And that's where the anointing comes in. It's the ability to see things that nobody can see. It's the ability to know things that nobody knows. And Isaac, I want you to know that there's somebody blocking up your well. There's rooms in this church. The only reason why they're not open, it's not natural, it's spiritual. You've been to doctor after doctor after doctor after doctor and they can't figure it out. And sometimes it's kind of get fear to steal your faith so that it can silence your mouth from declaring that God is a good God. Satan don't care about you having all the stuff. He just wants to close your mouth. He wants to close your declaration. He wants to close your ability to declare that that God is faithful and there are times and there are seasons where Satan wins but I want you to awaken your spirit up and no matter what you're seeing right now you need to understand it's not natural it's spiritual it is not God blocking the wells it is the Philistines blocking the wells because they know the plan God has for your life so I'm asking I'm asking you to start pulling down the warfare that you feel because there's nothing wrong with the seed that you got in the ground. Nothing wrong with the effort that you put in there. Some atmospheres, they need to be fixed. But you don't fix them because you think it's all natural. Not everything is natural. Not everything is natural. Not everything is natural. Not everything is natural. So here it is. So God sends them to a valley. Tells them to leave. Go to a valley. He tells them to leave, go to a valley. And here's the thing. This valley was connected to a mountain. The mountain had streams that were flowing down. If you're in a valley, make sure you still connect to the mountain. If you're in a valley, make sure you still connect to the mountain. Because the mountain flowed streams. So here was the problem. And I feel that I need to transition in this moment. So here's the thing. When you don't know what to do, y'all, sometimes it is okay. When you're perplexed and do not know what to do, sometimes waiting is not a bad option. When, when you don't know what to do, sometimes waiting is not a bad option. Some of us try to make decisions because we feel like we have to have a decision in the bank. But sometimes the best decision is to just wait. Sometimes the best decision is just to wait. Sometimes the best decision is just to wait. 
Now, what happened with um, what happened with Isaac was that everybody that was sowing in the land, they were getting 30-fold return. But the scripture says when he sowed, he was getting a hundredfold. We're sowing in the same soil. Why is your result different than mine? There is going to be some animosity naturally because we in the same soil. I'm doing what you're doing. I see what you're doing. And they're getting 30-fold. Historians are saying they were getting 30-fold. But when Isaac sold, he was getting 100. How is it that we're doing the exact same thing? And you are getting greater return than we get. Because you got history with God. You met God in Genesis 14. They met him in Genesis 26. God got a purpose for your life. The well that Isaac was digging. And he said when Isaac began to dig, he named the well Sithna, which means when water flows, contention happens. So for all of you high producers, high achievers, here's what it says. He says very plainly, he says, when production happened, when production happened, persecution started you had no persecution when you weren't productive but you had persecution when you became productive you had family strife when you became productive there's the answer right there what happened we both grew up in the same house we both lived under the same roof we both grew up in the same conditions I went to the same college, you went to college, but for some odd reason you came out a hundredfold and I'm still at 30. In the human heart, it creates strife. When This is the thing you and I gotta be mature enough to understand. Some people have strife with you because they can't help it. It's not that they're mean, it's not that they're wicked, they can't help it. They're doing what you're doing, but they're not getting your result. And you can sit there and say, well, I don't know what it is. Yeah, it's the favor of God on your life, but how do you explain that to somebody who's working just as hard as you are, who's waking up earlier than you are, who's sweating to get what God has told them to do, but they're not getting the same result, and strife happens. And Isaac moves on, builds another, builds another well in another land he builds another well in another land he builds another well in another land because he understands something when I can't trust God in my present I must visit my history to help me know that he has a future for me that's why Isaac didn't kill them for the well because he had history in Genesis 14 to know that God, I've seen that when it doesn't go the way I want, you have another plan that I did not write out. And some of you are still in the old season when you're missing the new plan that God has because God always comes up with another way when your way doesn't work. Maybe it was never his way. So we're going to pray. I'm going to help you. And we're going to pray this way. That God would give you wisdom. That you would not date a well that's empty. that you would deserve where to dig. There's nothing more frustrating than putting your effort in a place that does not give you a return. And some of you have been digging in a place that God didn't tell you to dig, but you thought I should just dig here 
because this is a good place. And I don't care how much you think God is blessing you in this season, you still got to sensitize your heart to make sure that you are doing what God said because you may be doing what God said in an old season. But your awkwardness is going to bring you into rooms you did not prepare for. Your uniqueness, your distinct difference is what God's going to use you for. I'm trying to help you that God, you know, um, they, they say all the time, listen, um, if in, our, in the island folks, if you were left-handed, they would beat you until you use your right hand. Uh, maybe not all islands, but in the Haitian household, they, they would beat you because they don't want you using your left hand because using your left hand is awkward. They want you to use your right hand because more dominant people use their right hand. But have you ever got punched by someone that you thought was going to punch you with their right hand and they were left-handed and it just surprised you? Some of you are left-handed surprised. They don't see you coming. They don't know you. They don't anticipate you. They're not expecting you. But you just keep perfecting your left hand. You just keep working your left hand. You just keep riding with your left hand. Because there's going to come a season where you're going to need your left hand. You're not going to need your right hand. King Elhood, he was in the book of Kings. The reason why he was able to walk up to the king. They told him, listen, you need to go kill the king. And he says, well, me? They said, yes, you need to go kill the king. And the only way that he was able to kill the king was because he was able to use his left hand. If he was right-handed, the king would have saw him and killed him. But the fact that he was left-handed, the king never saw it coming. And some of you are left-handed. Stop trying to be right-handed because God's going to anoint your left hand. Listen, y'all. Let me tell you a crazy story in the world. I found this out yesterday. I went to preach for Bishop John Guns. He told me yesterday, <coughs> he said, your, my wife said, you didn't look like a preacher and you seemed awkward. And when they asked me to speak, when, when I was introduced, he sat by his wife and his wife said, have you ever heard him preach before you invited him? Bishop Guns looked at her and said, actually, I never have. He said, this may be a disaster because we've never heard him speak before. And so the whole message, his wife's crying the whole time. And she came yesterday after I did this leadership piece. He said, I was convicted because I never realized that God was using someone I could never see. He said, my goal this year is to get you into 10 churches around the world because they need to see your uniqueness. See, what happens is that we try to dig what seems popular and you miss your assignment because you're trying to fit into what everybody else is doing as opposed to being unique in the way that God created you to be because God cannot anoint who you pretend to be he can only anoint your authentic self and if you're left-handed be left-handed if you're right-handed be right-handed but don't try to be what God has not made you to be but I want us to pray and I want you to stand because I want to be on time we're gonna pray I want you to hold someone's hand that's significant to you. That doesn't mean your neighbor's hand if you're sitting next to your spouse and hold your spouse's hand. I just want someone touching with somebody. All right, forget it. Just hold somebody's hand because y'all looking around talking about, listen, you ain't, you ain't, you, I'm just sitting by you. You ain't significant to me at all, player. I just, I'm just obeying the pastor because you ain't. When we talk about grow groups, when we talk about grow groups, we talk about growing together as a community, as a, as a family, because we, we need each other. The hand that you're holding is one that's a testimony that, that, that God still is a redeemer, that God still is a keeper, that God still is a provider, that God is still awake. You're holding the hand of somebody that, that could have given up many times. But they said, I, I believe God is still faithful. And I, I'm going to hold on. I don't know what I'm holding on to, 
but I'm going to hold on to what. I don't know exactly how it's all going to work out, babe. I don't know. Some of you are in that situation right now. Well, baby, I don't know how it's going to work. I don't know where the money's going to come from, but I believe that God will not let us fail. You may be on the brink of divorce right in this service, and you are going to say, Lord, I'm going to believe what counselors, counselors are good, and we need them. But Lord, I'm going to believe that you're going to start communication flowing. You're going to start us liking each other again. We may not love each other, but you're going to make us start liking each other again. And as we start liking each other again, we're going to start loving each other again. I want us, because some of you, listen, you can go to Harvard and you'll still have wells plugged up. It's not about your education a lot of times. When you become spiritual, you fight spiritual things. Have you ever felt exhausted and you ain't done nothing? It's just a weight that just comes on you. You're rested and you still ain't get no rest. Sometimes it's not natural. You done went and spent $3,000 and got a brand new bed. It ain't got nothing to do with the bed. It got to do with everything spiritual. Everything spiritual. It's not always natural. You may be sick in your body. It may not be natural. It may be spiritual. I just want you to just think for a moment. Maybe some of the friends that left your life, it weren't natural. It's spiritual. Maybe you need to open up your eyes to see just a little deeper into the realm of the Spirit of God. Five seconds, we're going to pray. What we're praying is, Lord, that you would unclog every well. You would unplug everything that is drowned up, that is held up in the name of Jesus. Five seconds, we're praying. One, two, three, four, five. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you're bringing up you're drowning up wells, Lord, in the name of Jesus. You're opening up wells that have been shut for years. We're digging it again, and we're trusting you again. God, give us life in the name of the Lord Jesus. Those areas that have been closed down, we ask you to open them up now in the name of the Lord. Father, I thank you that no weapon formed against our purpose shall prosper. Holy Spirit, as you spoke to Isaac and you told Isaac to dig. We're asking you, Lord, to give us an anointing to dig. Give us power to dig. Father, I pray that you will not let us get discouraged by what we see, but Lord, we will trust in you. We will depend on you. We will not lead up to our own understanding. We thank you for doctors. We thank you for their wisdom, but Lord, we come to you because you are the chief physician. You are the Lord of Lords. You are the King of Kings. And we trust you. And we give you our heart. We give you our soul. We give you our mind. We give you our bodies. Lord, have your way in our hearts, in our spirits, in our minds, in our children. Touch them from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. Lord, I pray by your spirit that you would give us wisdom and eyes to see every Everything that's not like you. Everything that is not like you. Everything stopping and stealing and holding us captive. If there was something that stole my affection from you, stole my zeal for you, Lord, I say I'm not mad at you anymore. I'm giving you myself again. I'm saying, Lord, I'm not upset at you anymore. I won't be mad at you anymore. And there's some of you in this place, you've been mad at God, and you need to get to the altar and reconcile your relationship with him. Because that was all it was about. To steal your worship, to steal your affection, to steal your adoration. Come on, you that's been mad at God, reconcile with him now. You got history with God. You know he would never try to harm you intentionally. Come on, you know God would never leave you intentionally.
for I will not be silent. Stay in this position, God will bless you. You got history with God. Come on, this is your moment. Deliver. Deliver yourself. Deliver yourself. Deliver yourself. It's long. God is here in this place. Come on, God is here in this place. Come on, God is here in this place. For I will not be and I will not be I will worship. sit by your mama's bed and pray that mantle's gonna fall on you you will be her in the earth and God will use you to do much more than what you're doing right now You can let your divorce stop you from becoming what God called you to be. You got too much history with God to count yourself out of the plan of God. What you're doing now is the bare minimum. God has so much more that he wants to flow through you and do. Lives are being held captive waiting on your obedience.
Father, thank you for this moment. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your grace. You have been here and you have met us.